Welcome to another edition of POS. My co-host is not always <laughs> Mike O'Donnell is with us because if you've been paying attention, unfortunately, Bobby kind of tapped out for a little bit. He was a little too upset at the jokes. He doesn't like cool uncle stuff. But if you watch back on the video, Mike's the one who said cool uncle first, not me. But either way, thanks for joining us, Mike. Well, thank you for having me, man. Well, now, it's, now it's part of your show. Now that we're, you're the other co-host, until <laughs> Bobby comes back. I'm Bobby um, now. He'll, listen, I want people to realize I want Bobby to come back. And I literally, as we did this show, I've sent out two invites, one to you. The other one is open. Bobby could walk in. He knows when we're recording. He knows he can come on. But he was upset. And I get that. And I think our first POS story is going to be, who's the piece of shit? We kind of did it on the Patreon thing. But I'd like to do that for real since you were there, Mike. But who's the piece of shit in this story? My Bobby had an idea, a dream to attack this woman. I get it. It was fun for him. He wa- he worked hard. He said he came up with a ton of plans, a lot of ideas. He scripted out in an hour's worth of show. He even said to me, you won't need any POS stories. We're going to have Mike on. He's on board. I've got a whole thing. I'm not a big fan of putting out stuff about attacking women. I'm just not. It's it's not a thing. But I might have to humor can go anywhere. And people are like, why wouldn't you want that? Like, I don't know. I think somewhere in my life, people could accuse me of certain things. No one's ever going to accuse me of being a pedophile. That's why I can make those jokes because I'm not a pedophile. So like, I know I went a different way in it, but either way, Bobby wanted to go that route. I was fine with it the way he was going, but with the top five list, it was kind of just like, here's why she's a cunt. Here's why she was raped. And I didn't know where it was going. So when I get uncomfortable, I go absurd. So yes. So I went to things like orphanages and cool uncles and weird shit, but I thought I was playing good cop to the bad cop, but Bobby did tell me he wanted to try this thing. It was going to be on a paywall. And I kind of, I guess in a way didn't go on board with him in that way. And at other times in life, I've said to him, Hey, let's try to stay in the structure. Let's not go too wacky. And he's listened to me. So maybe I wasn't being a good co-host by not going on board and going with it a hundred percent. But then again, I probably should have asked for more notes and asked for more questions and seen how passionate he really was about it. Cause I didn't really have a lot of information. So who's the piece of shit? Is it me for not understanding what's going with it? Is it Bobby for going in the show in a totally different direction than a way we've ever gone and assuming I would know, or is it you Mike? Because we were both trying to, I guess, like get you on board with us and you as a great guest went both ways. You made him feel comfortable his side. And you also laughed and joked with me on my side. So who's the piece of shit? This is a tough one because, I mean, I get Bobby was very passionate. Bobby was coming straight out the fucking gate with some heat. Yeah. And I get Top five I places he'd I rather be inside than her. Yeah, a blender. First thing you did. Um, <laughs> an elevator with Ray Ray. It was, it was great. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't realize he put that much time into it. If I had known that, I'm, maybe I would have handled it a little different. But at the same time, it's like, Oh, we're going to make this lady kill herself. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So I don't know. I guess, I guess me and you, I'd say are both the piece of shit. I, I, I would say I, I, when I watched them both back, it is you and I, um, I, it's not him, but at the same time, I think Bobby does forget but sometimes we're, we're the piece of shit. And like, Oh, like the world needs a villain or else, you know what <laughs> I mean? It's like, if we had to go that route or bad shit would have happened. Right. And I know Bobby wasn't thinking this way, but when, when Bobby's doing stuff with compound, there's a difference between money behind a paywall and then just being behind a paywall. Like, yeah, yeah we're behind it. We don't have many supporters. We don't make any money and we have no access to lawyers or things. If we go so hard on her. That's defamation. We It was getting to a real point where I'm like, we were having fun. We invited it. We covered this woman. She could go after us if she wanted to. And we're not going to win against anyone who has enough money to have a real TV show. Yeah. And especially yeah. with our boyish charms. No way. Yeah. It's the pedophile hunter. Three, three white done. men hating on a woman trying to have a dream. Like, yeah, no, we're going straight to yeah, jail. It's done right there. And yes, was the way I went good. I'm also not going to attack my friend. And I love Bobby. And I'm not going to be like, stop it right now because he lets me do whatever I want. And I usually let him do whatever he wants. So I was like, let's just go silly. And yeah, my idea is silly is crazy. When I've told people who didn't see the podcast, the two jokes I made, they're like, whoa, the orphanage one, they were kind of on board with, but they're like that cool uncle thing. That's a, and I go, but Mike was right there. Like, it was like, we wrote it together. It was like the, it was like a modern day Abbott Costello 
right away we understood where that was going because it's absurd. If you're going to laugh at anything, it's fine. But that if I'm going to think that way, I have to also think Bobby should be allowed to be given the chance to make that thing be funny too. But it just seemed like it wasn't POS stories. It was fuck this lady. And I thought we should have yeah. done it in more POS form. But maybe that's me trying to overthink it. Like he's creative and he did put an hour's worth of work. And to be fair, even though I like this show and I love performing all every week on this show with Bobby, I think I've said it on the show many times. I look for the POS stories 30 minutes before the show starts on my phone on New York Post real quick. So I don't put in the work that Bobby put in <laughs> to that episode because I like to read it off the top and just and not know the story. Bobby had lists and I think he had like charts. He was ready to go. I mean, he had oh, hours yeah, he worth had, of shit. We only saw that, 20 minutes. He had that string going to a pitcher in his fucking room. You know what I mean? Yes. I was going to, at one point, say we should make up a Ron Powell who's like RuPaul but gets the boys. And I probably should have done that earlier. Not Ron Paul, because that would have been fucked up. Right? <laughs> if we just made it Ron Paul. <laughs> Rand Paul, you could go with him. Rand Paul, yeah. <laughs> Grandpa, but yeah, or like me, Boo Pal. I don't know who we would do. But I wanted a guy version, like we did, and we started talking about that in there too. And people said that was their favorite part when you said there should be a filter for boys with a mustache. People enjoyed that for for her to catch men as well. So hopefully she listens and does that. But I, I think all three of us were the piece of shit. Yeah, it was very uh, well. She committed a cardinal sin of saying we're not funny. And but, anytime someone says you're not funny, it's immediately fuck that person. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, there was a time in my life where I dated a girl that I didn't like for three months because she said I wasn't funny. Exactly. And my whole goal was to prove to her I was. She's like, I think you're attractive. And I think you're a great guy. I just watched your stand up. I don't find you funny at all. So, so you get her in bed. You go, yeah, is this funny? Is this fucking funny? <laughs> It's just like my goal was I'll prove her wrong. She's just, I think she's just trying to get my attention. But she also had several stillborn children. So I think I win. Oh, yeah. Well. Have I mentioned that story on you? Here's a POS. No. Story. Okay, that's a good one. Here's a POS story for you. Some of you that listen might know this, but Mike does. It's all catch them up. I dated this girl for a while. And uh, when I first started dating her, she messaged me one time. We had met once. But we hadn't hooked up yet or anything. And then she was she was texting me. And she was like one day like, Hey, I've got all these tattoos. You want to you want to see them? I was like, yeah. Well, that to me that meant like, okay, she's gonna send kind of nude photos. I'm like, oh, okay, sure, whatever. And really it was stillborn tat- baby tattoos. We're getting there. Like um, the can- like the Cannibal Corpse butchered at birth cover. Not as no, not as creative. Oh. Um, so I I said to her, yeah, sure. And she says, well, I'll describe them to you first. And she was like little photos of each one. And she's like, <laughs> this hey. one's a cupcake. Well, it's her whole back. And it looks like Heaven's Gate, and there's little animals, all the like cult? bunnies and stuff. And each animal has initials and dates on them. And I go, well, "What does those mean?" And she goes, "Well, each one represents one of my stillborn children." And what? I, and her fucking back looked like fucking. It was just like it was like Bambi's forest. It was just like, oh my god, there's so many animals, animals, all these animals, and then like a big gate. So all I, I didn't know how to respond. So I said, well, I guess we can never have sex from behind because I can't get hard over a graveyard. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can't blow a load on fucking like names of dead children. Well, that's the funny thing. The next thing I said when she didn't respond was, I guess if I do come on your back, if you believe in stem cell research, that will bring those kids back to life. And Damn, you said that? Well, I <laughs> we saw how I act when I'm awkward. Okay, Bobby learned it. So if you're not laughing, I go for the Jesus. Dope. <laughs> and she was like, I guess that's funny. And I was, like, I was like, all right, my bad, whatever. So we still did date for a little bit. Then we broke up. Obviously, it wasn't working out. She just had no personality. But um, it didn't, didn't get good humor. <laughs> so we broke up. A couple months later, I performed at a comedy club that's near where she lived. And I did not know she came to the show. That was the day I decided to tell the same story because I thought it would be funny. Did the crowd did like not, it? Did not know she was in the... The crowd loved it. The crowd... <laughs> it was a late show. So it was like supposed to be a dirtier show. I kind of went with that route. You know what I mean? So I did that, whatever. After the show, she walks up to me. I'm standing next to a buddy of mine, another comic. And she goes, was that about me? And straight face, they go, 
no, that's about another girl I know with three de- stillborn babies. And she goes, oh, okay. And then left. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, yeah, that's why I couldn't date her. She doesn't uh, different get girl. shit. <laughs> Oh, so who's the piece of shit in that story? It's a different girl with the same tattoo as you. <laughs> no, in the Damn, story, dude. I made sure I don't describe the tattoo because I figure it's in that area someone might know her. So she had a fucking pet cemetery tattoo on her yeah, back. On her back. <laughs> like literally, it was three animals and they were you big. Don't go down there. It, was, it was it's insane. You gotta bury your own. See. I mean, but you gotta feel safe about coming in her because it ain't coming out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. You don't have to wear a condom. I mean, that shit's toxic. She's got the Auschwitz pussy. It's nice. Yeah, dude. Just going like, in there, you're getting wet, you're coming out dead. It's like Chernobyl down there. <laughs> you're Chernobyl. You're Chernobyl. I can't even do it. You're ch- turning me on. I couldn't even do it. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, but she's, but, but I saw on Facebook that she now had another child. So that kid's okay. tough. <laughs> that kid, yeah, that kid's going to fucking, that kid's going to be a strong man or something like that. That, that kid's going to win the Olympics and then become a lady and run somewhere with yeah, a car. For sure. like, that like, strong. You know how many bodies I had to climb over to get out of that woman's place? <laughs> The sequel to 300 is just her pussy and a guy standing the sh- over it yelling, ah. The streets are paved with the bones of the fucking people that I had to climb over to get this gold medal in uh, throwing. <laughs> <laughs> throwing a javelin. The dick cathalon that had to go in there. <laughs> yeah. oh, I Jesus. hope it's running. Oh. I've been running my whole life. Dude. But as comics, how do you not tell that story? That When that happens to you in life, how do you not try to do something with it? Oh, no, I, I do the same thing. Right. I was more mad as she didn't laugh at the humor. She shared that with me, knowing I tell jokes. That's not yeah. sexy. You're saying you want to hear about my tattoos. I thought she was going for sexy. <laughs> yeah, is this turn you on? Look at the yeah, date, like, February like 2nd like, to February 3rd. You like that non-breathing <laughs> baby shit? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, there's three days we can't go out. <laughs> yeah, that's Or do we celebrate? How many gifts do I have to buy at Christmas? I don't know. You know what's about funny? The, the small stocking. You know what wasn't on her back? Your cum? The, <laughs> no, yes, that was it. And also the birth date of the alive one before. <laughs> because there was an alive one. That wasn't anywhere. No, that's that's the memorial back, dude. You can't. You put the, you put his name on there. That's a fucking countdown. That's a timer, dude. <laughs> Every time she goes to a chiropractor, they just cry. <laughs> Oh, do anybody, if she ever gets like a massage, right? <laughs> just like, oh, Jesus, lady. A little lower, a little lower. Susie! <laughs> no. Oh, my shoulder's real tender, right where it says Kevin. <laughs> there it is. Got a real knot back there. <laughs> real, real not having three kids. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I'm still the piece of shit in that one, right? Yeah, thousand okay. percent. <laughs> just, just, One million percent. You're the piece of shit. So my kids are dead. Oh, I guess I can't come on your back. My kids are dead, and all I got was this lousy tattoo. <laughs> That's a new T-shirt. I, I'm making. I've done that, shirt. and I've done that completely by accident. When I just I heard like a funny dead baby joke, and I was like, "Hey, do you want to hear a dead baby joke?" And I completely forgot that this person I was talking to like just had a miscarriage. So like, no, I don't want to hear. That. <laughs> Like, are you sure it's super? I'm like, oh, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. On stage once, I tried. I, tr- I, mean, I tried it three different times. It was on a weekend, and the joke didn't work any of the three shows. But I, because someone said the word stillborn, and I was kind of laughing at it. And I was like, uh, oh, the other day, a lady said uh, that she had a stillborn baby. And I was like, congratulations. And she's like, excuse me? I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, she goes, that means my baby died. I go, oh, I thought you said stillborn. Like it was born and now it's still born. It's still here. It's still alive the entire time. You mean dead baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he just came out super calm. Yeah, it wasn't just like, like flailing around. Or like, just, I'm, yeah. I'm still born. I'm 47 years old. I'm still born. Yeah. yeah. W- women women are sensitive about their kids. It wasn't dying. just women. Was the fucking... audience. <laughs> I, mean, I was doing well. Like I had enough confidence in the act. Like, I can do this. Only one show. One guy went. Woo! Like it was silence, but no one else cheered. I'm like, all right, don't go near that guy. <laughs> that guy is dangerous. Ugh. Now, Bobby usually has a story prepared. Do you have any stories from the maybe comedy this weekend or anything where we can find a piece of shit in it? 
Um, I got into we got into a fight this weekend oh, at the comic oh, zone. That was cool. That's not really a, a piece of sh- well, yeah, maybe it is. I was, okay, so um, Todd, the normal security at the comics, and Todd's a fucking tank. That dude's gigantic, fucking army veteran. I mean, he's built like a brick shit house. No one fucks with him. He looks like death. He's on vacation, so he puts me and Damien in charge. I'm hosting. We've had Damien on the show before, too. So people yeah, know so is. Damien Damien's doing security, right? So we're going to talk about this on a boy in his fridge. Check that out. Recording after this. Please do. Um, so Damien's security, and this, this one dude's in there, and he's, like, legit wrestling his friend. Like, he has, like, his leg in, like, the air. And I was like, yo, Damien, do your job. And he walked over, <laughs> and he was like, hey, guys, can you, like, knock it off? And the dude's, like, super drunk. And he was like, all right, man, bet. See what happens. And I was like, well, that's not a normal response to that. But, you know, whatever. Damien sits down with me. You know, we're having a conversation. Like, 20 minutes go by. That dude's throwing, like, food and, like, cups. Like, plastic. Like, just plasticware and shit like that. So, the owner's like, yeah, I'll, you know, tell him to pay his tab. He's got to fucking leave. So, I can make this a piece of shit story. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so, Damien goes over and he's like, yo, he's like, yo, pay your tab. You got to leave. And the guy's like the fuck did you say and i was like oh sh-. i started taking my hoodie off i was like this is this is definitely gonna get physical and damien's like dude like pay your tab like you gotta get the fuck out like the owner just said and he pushed damien and he swung at him he missed and then started walking towards him and like they they kind of shoved each other a little bit i walked over and i fucking collar tied him i grabbed him by the back of the head and he tried to turn his head to get away and i hooked his jaw and i was just neck cranking him like that <laughs> everyone's like yo 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 stop 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 <laughs> like i could have fucking paralyzed this kid right <laughs> they fucking everybody breaks it up i let go of it yeah everything calms down and all these people kept coming up to damien they're like oh damien you're so brave thank you so much for doing everything and i was just like dude what no i was like i fucking did everything yeah <laughs> So who's the piece of shit in this story? Is it that guy for um, being drunk at the bar and starting a fight for being asked to leave for being rowdy? Or is it me for wanting credit for stopping the fight? <laughs> or is it for Dave and Damien for not doing his job and making me do his job? It's none of you three. It's the people that said, good job, Damien, and not good job, Mike. Because that's know, what I just the world want, we're in, because you're a white man. And they let it go. <laughs> They applauded the black man for helping, but they're like, whatever, white guy, you don't matter. And that's what ha- black lives matter in that moment. And that's what happened. <laughs> you helped too. Now, I think it's the asshole kid who for real, who says, all right, bet you were already that tough guy. Like, you know, go ahead. The, the, try, oh, he wasn't me. tough at all, dude. I gripped yeah. that dude the fuck up. <laughs> but he's the kind of kid that runs his mouth. And usually people are like, you're not worth my time. So he thinks he's tough because he thinks people back down. But in reality, they just don't even care. So he, he's going to go, he, one day he's going to get hurt real bad. Yeah. Hopefully it's from Damien and you. <laughs> oh, no, well, it's, it's the security guard for getting you two to fill in. Damien fucking had to throw a girl out yesterday. Why are you guys working the whole weekend? Because <laughs> we had a fucking, uh, oh, hello. Oh, wait a minute. All right, for Look sure. Who showed up Todd to isn't our just podcast. an army veteran. Todd does enough steroids to make Chris Benoit blush, okay? To give you an idea of how Jack this human being is. Yeah, Todd's a fucking man. Secondly, then why would he get Damien shit, and Mike it's the this filming. cocksucker Mike O'Donnell who comes in and steals my fucking spot on the podcast, comes in, drives a wedge between me and Pat, and then he just swoops right in to steal my seat. He's you a missed goddamn it, Bobby. Dan I was, Brown 2.0. I was smoking a joint. Well, I had a desk. You told jokes. You already did more than I did on the last podcast, then. <laughs> Which we discussed already, it. and Mike and I decided him and I were the pieces of shit on that podcast. <laughs> so we did the story. It's cool. I'm in another war right now with goddamn cocksucking housekeeping. Who saw you want to tell that story? Come to my door and open it, and it wouldn't lock work. My key wouldn't work, and I was like, hey, can you let me in? And they were like, no. And I was like, really? And they were like, no, we can't. And that would have been bad enough, except they hijacked one of the elevators. So now I have to walk down 19 flights because one elevator won't come up because it already thinks there's one on my goddamn floor. There really is a story there. I just wanted me to hear. Are they in the room now? No, they're right outside. That's why I yelled cocksucking piece of shit toward the door so they could hear it. You want to bring them in? No, 
No, I'm good. Wow. I'm coming in hot. I ran. Are you, just gonna, you should just. H. I'm not in just shape. My nipples spill are spill shit in front of them. Just get a cup yeah. of water and be like, oh, look at that. I'm just going to not use the toilet all week. I'm just going to use the trash can <laughs> next to the toilet. There you go. If they're right outside, I would literally leave the key, the car key, whatever it is, inside, walk right outside, stare at them closer, and go, oh, I did it again. And then keep making them come up and letting you back in over and over again. <laughs> just, and every time they do it, just turn around. Yeah. I wanted to thank you and close the door. Oh, I did it again. Oh, no, fuck. <laughs> Just keep locking yourself out. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't. I just can't stay away from you guys. <laughs> just like you can't stay away from locking you in know, fucking room. Pieces of shit. Bad. But are you okay? Fuck you that, had a big dude. run in the city. It's cold. Yeah, man. It, it's not that cold. Unfortunately, it's fucking hot. I'm I was not yeah. dressed appropriately. I'm wearing like sweat shorts and a hoodie, and not a proper undershirt. So my nipples are chafed. People it's are looking at me there? like. It's I 52. May have. I guess that's hot. It's 39 over here. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, it's 39 in Pennsylvania. I live in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. I fought a girl this weekend. Ooh, what is wrong with you? I fought you a girl and a black girl. girl man. <laughs> Fighting everybody. <laughs> As a misogynistic racist, what a fucking weekend, dude. <laughs> By the way, Bobby. As much, Mike has been a fantastic guest and was a very good fill-in co-host. But I learned right away, if it was just me and Mike, the stories are dark. Like, we did three. Oh, was, yeah. It was, it was stillborn babies, <laughs> the coverage of the RuPaul thing, and then as you walked in to the Mike and Damien beating up a woman. <laughs> I am glad we got to the bottom of that. I was worried what happened to poor you guys without Todd and down. Yeah, dude. We why, handle shit. Why well, is I the handle second shit. Second option from Todd, the steroid Dude, man. The funny, YouTube. the funny thing, the the second, the second night, Damien had to throw a girl out, and I I learned something. Uh, this girl, like Damien, like legit, just like picked her up and started walking with her to take her outside, and she was like, "Oh, I'll just dead weight it," and she went limp. But girls don't realize that when they dead weight, they still only weigh like a hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> she just went like that. It's like, all right, no, that's not the carry. ones I know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. She's like, "I'll just make myself as heavy as possible." It did nothing. I know some girls who are lightweighting it when they're dead it. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. wait. So wait, is that? Oh, could he get in trouble for like picking no, him up and no. walking out? No, Why, he you, you can't put your arms around anyone. I don't think he was security. She was causing a scene. She was trying to fight a bartender. I still don't think you put your hands on. And he's not bartender? really security. Hang on, which no, he is. He was security. Um, Colleen. Oh, I don't know her. She's the one that looks like a horse. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because she wouldn't have taken Liz. Oh, Liz no. Liz have fucked her up, dude. Yeah, yeah, Liz yeah. is That's built like fucking... Nobody Liz is built like Liz. Zach Stacy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you said the one looks like a horse. Bobby goes, okay. Like, <laughs> there's this one girl <laughs> whose exact description of her whole life is you're a horse. Man, she's understand. 400 pounds. She has four legs. Well, you have to understand, <laughs> Pat, most of the, uh, the waitresses at the comedy zone would be a different livestock. Yeah. <laughs> so when he wasn't like this, she looks like a cow. I was like, oh, I know who. <laughs> oh, they're not attractive? No, I didn't no. say that. I'm no, just no, saying. No, they're attractive. They're just Wait, are you saying livestock or attractive? I'm saying if we made a show and they were animals, if they voiced an animal on the show, she would be a horse. Who would be the pig? Liz would be a bull. Uh, <laughs> a pig? Ah, fuck. No pigs? I, don't think, I don't know about pigs. Slam pig? Slam pig? No, we don't have a goat. I mean, that one girl has a goat too. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you know? Do you guys know the big pygmy? Big pygmy? Big pygmy? Is that a rapper? No, no, no. It's a UFC fighter. Beetlejuice? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Close though. It's a big fighter, and he he was a white dude who like gave up fighting to go build wells for pygmies in Africa, and like he occasionally oh. won his. <laughs> When his charity <laughs> runs out of money, he'll take another fight. Hey, and I made you a well. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> the center of your town, little people. <laughs> but occasionally when like he needs more money, he'll take a fight. But like his passion's very clearly the 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 pygmies. I feel like Liz is her long lost brother whose passion is waitressing at the comedy zone, but she just waits for one uppity woman to give her a fight and she's gonna come out. Like she's fighting yeah, yeah, for the that, heavyweight title. She that lady, awesome. that lady was a problem, dude. <laughs> Swung at a bartender, she was like screaming. She grabbed a fuck, tried to snatch a fucking drink. 
Uh, and they're like, yeah, you're cut off. Like, we're going to call, like, the fucking cops. And it was just like, whoop. And the best part, her boyfriend was like, dude, what the fuck? And we're like, oh, he's security. And he goes, oh, was she acting up? <laughs> she didn't defend her at all. No. just like, oh, did she do something? All right. <laughs> That's the best. He just knew. He's like, bitch. He was like, if she says anything, we'll just say she said the N-word. And I'm like, yeah, I'll say she said it. (laughs) (laughs) Hold on, I found your boy. Where is he? Big pig. Pig me? Yeah, I found him. Is it Beetlejuice? You know he has his own crypto now. There he is. (laughs) Is that him? Yeah, that's him. (laughs) (laughs) I like the other guy. That's what I would look like with a better beard. (laughs) Yeah, how old is that dude? (laughs) (laughs) He got married twice. Do you think I was raised? (laughs) <laughs> yeah dude he like builds wells and stuff and it's kind of funny because like i guess the pygmies get picked on by all the other african tribes <laughs> of course they do <laughs> right like obviously so he goes in and builds them these wells and then he just leaves it's like what do you what do you think's gonna happen when you leave you think they're just gonna leave the well alone <laughs> oh man I how, like many pig- how many pygmies of- fall down the well oh, so many <laughs> And there's yelling, pick me up, pick me up, <laughs> pick me up. It's just, it's literally, it's just a shot glass full of water. And I'm like, you guys would be great. Do you, do you ever think there was a kid whose make a wish was to meet the big pygmy? And he like <laughs> had a, had a brain eating disease. So he was a little slower and he, he went with him to Africa and he just kept going, Oompa Loompas are real. <laughs> Bobby, this is a picture of that meeting. <laughs> that that yeah. kid is Benjamin Button pygmy. And he's meeting, he's meeting. He's, yeah, he's, he's showing him a picture. He's like, now you guys are going to pretend that you work in a chocolate factory. And he's like, am I this one? <laughs> like, That's, yeah, you're going to be the one that sings. You're going to be the one that sings. Now, now Mike, I, I have a little inside details. Did you, who was, uh, what was the means of entertainment this weekend? Was it straight comedy from the headliner? It was a hypnotist. Rich Guzzi, right? Oh, so yes, you let the greatest the devil, hypnotist in the world. I know him. He's, he's not so you, bad. You had a guy in who does the devil's work, and you yeah, were surprised people were acting up at shows. Right? Yeah, that's true, dude. There was something kind of on you. You know, Todd was smart. He was like, I'm going to go find a Catholic church and hide the demon yeah, summoners in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Have I mean, yeah, this, that's the show to fucking act up on when you're like, I'm, 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 I'm under hypnosis, dude. <laughs> Have either of you ever opened for like a true hypnotist, not a comedy one? No, I only rich. That's the only hypnotist I know. Because rich does jokes too, so opinion. it's like at least the crowd is like when you do comedy first, and then the crowd is there for laughter and hypnotism. They're still on board for you. But I've opened for like real hypnotists, so the crowd comes out not knowing there's a comic first, and they're like they want yeah. hypnotism, so they don't. They're not there to laugh. They're there to like watch people be stupid and like not. So they're, they they don't get jokes. They're just staring and they're waiting for you to put them <laughs> under. It's the worst fucking audience. That's like, yeah, this oh, my mother got a bunch died. of dead kids. Talk to her. They're like, Talk to her. I just want to quit smoking. Yeah. Oh, I think I've told that story, right? If I haven't, here's a, so there was a, we had a hypnotist at Joker's Wild years ago, and uh, he wasn't any good. He's like the, one of the worst ones ever, but he was like real cheap. He said he'd do it for $25, which I thought was amazing. Well, yeah, you guys should have known immediately. <laughs> but we didn't have any money. I was like, whatever. It's not going to work. No one's going to come. So we got like, 28 people to show up half of them comped to watch this hypnotist guy and he goes up and he's not that good but near the end he goes hey at the end of my shows i like to help people out if anybody wants to come up here and tell me something that they're battling with i can help them through hypnotism to get over it and this guy sitting with this woman he stands up he raises his hand and he's shaking and he goes i beat her all the time (laughs) I can't stop, I can't I stop love her. hitting her. I can't. I, he said that. He goes, I, I love <laughs> her, but I can't stop beating her. I need help. So he comes up. He's crying. Everyone in the audience is like, what the fuck? He comes up. The hypnotist sits him down, puts him under, says encouraging words to him. When he snaps his fingers, you see a relief over the man's face. He runs over. He kisses her. She's crying. The show ends. The 20 people are clapping. Her. He kisses her. She flinches. <laughs> As they leave, <laughs> and everyone's leaving, I go to the guy. Wow, that's incredible. He goes, yeah, dude, that doesn't work. I don't know what I'm doing. I just didn't know what to do, so I just called an audible. Call the cops. <laughs> He's like, I, He's like, I can't make people not beat their wife. <laughs> 
I gave him an extra 50 bucks just for that. I thought he was great. <laughs> That's amazing. Called the cops. Yeah, it was insane. I'm like, why would you admit that? It, well, I you think he all. fucking dude? <laughs> he cracked her when they got home and he was like, oh, hypnotism's fake. She's she's shaking a watch in his face. Stop it. He just hits her with it. <laughs> but but the, but the he's hip, treated like a fucking the hypnotist. But, but, but the hypnotist. He's punching between the fucking <laughs> clock. How about this hypno We're feeling fist? very sleepy. <laughs> hypno fist. <laughs> That's great. I like to think if you looked up his uh, Yelp reviews now, you just see one from her where it was like, my husband and I attended the show. Like, complete he, phony. One he, star. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's worse than that. It's worse than that. It starts the, the, the title is just hypnotism is real exclamation point, exclamation point. And she's like, yeah, years ago we went to see, you know, not rich guzzy, but somebody climbed on him <laughs> and it, uh, my husband was going to beat me and he got hypnotized out of it. And the good news is he doesn't beat me as much now anymore. But, uh, Anytime he hears the Cheers theme song, he thinks he's Muhammad Ali taking on George Frazier. So as long as as long as Cheers doesn't play, everything's peaceful in my household. Which is ironic because sometimes when he hits me so hard, I feel like nobody knows my name, like the song says. <laughs> a little rope a dope in the fucking show. Things were okay until Norm McDonald died. Then every time I heard Norm, he just threw a right jab. <laughs> That would be an amazing to see a fucking review. <laughs> <laughs> I, he said he, he said he, my husband would stop hitting me. Liar. <laughs> what are you doing? Calling the police? I told you I never would. I'm just writing another Yelp review. <laughs> Worst free hypnotist show I've ever seen. <laughs> was amazing. I mean, it was terrible for 50 minutes, but the last 10 was awesome. Yeah, no, I, I love all that stuff, dude. Any, any, any like specialty act. It's like, yeah, they do your thing. Oh, yeah, I've, I've, I've opened for magicians, zone. hypnotists, mediums, all that shit. Yeah, open for fucking Gallagher, dude. Nice. <laughs> it's, like, it's just, it's just mm. smashing fruit. I've opened <laughs> up for prop guys, and that's weird because you have to stand in their props. Because like the stage is just covered in their shit. Yeah, and you have to go up and stand there. And there was a guy, the comedy tornado, Paul something, Paul, I forget his name. I almost said Paul Verzi, but it's not Paul Verzi. Paul, Paul Verzi is a good comic, but um, I forget his name. Paulie Shore. But he had all this shit, and he had a keyboard. And what he would do is he would um, go, what's your name, Michael? And you go, yeah. He's like, did you row the boat ashore? Dun, 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 dun. And then it was like, no one laughed. It's like an 8,000-year-old fucking like, yeah. Catholic joke. And then he would just do that for every name. And then at the last 10 minutes, he would just sing Billy Joel for real, not song parodies, just sing Billy Joel. Piano so, man. Sometimes he would start off with <laughs> like, an Italian restaurant. Every song but piano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Theme Italian restaurant, and then do like honesty, and then go into like only the good die young or whatever, like all that shit. You do a whole fucking thing in the crowd. So the crowd wasn't laughing, but they left happy because they liked the songs. But so it was, it was like a cheap pop thing. But he was all weekend was just like cutting my time more and more. He's like, all right, I know you did 20, but this time I just do 15. And the next I did because he wanted more time to do his shit. And I was actually doing all right. And I was kind of making fun of like, I kept saying it's always been my dream to perform inside Sanford and son's house. Cause I was just standing in all this shit. And then I would just pull stuff up and just, and just go, Oh, you could kill someone with this. Or Here's the, you know, the professor plum killed someone with this thing. I'm just being an asshole. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Don't touch my stuff. So the last show, I went, uh, you guys ready for the next super hack comic? <laughs> I grabbed the keyboard and went, da 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 like he does. And then walked mm-hmm. off. And I was like, yeah. It was fun for me. The crowd was there for him. So they didn't give a fuck about me. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's always for Gallagher, dude. And they're like, get off stage. I'm trying to get covered in fruit. Yeah. I need this watermelon to rain. I've got a raincoat. I got a poncho on. I'm ready. I thought he also did jokes. He, he I mean, kind of. He was telling like Polish jokes. Oh, <laughs> it's like super racist shows. It's like, all right, who wants to see me smash this pumpkin pie real quick? Do you guys uh, know who Father Guido Sarducci is? My neighbor. <laughs> yes, it's your neighbor. Yeah, he's a Bobby, you know Italian that is? priest. It, it was a guy. I don't know the real guy's name, but he played a character, and he was on Saturday Night Live like at the beginning no, years too. No, he played a character, but he Father also Guido did it. On, no, but he also did it on stage as a stand-up comic. <laughs> 
Sounds like a sandwich. And then he was he would go on he would go on there and be like this Italian weird priest guy. There's a guy in Connecticut when I first started who was a Father Guido Sarducci impersonator. So not already was it like the most inside niche thing. This guy wasn't even that guy. He would just be that guy. And then he would do like seven minutes on a show because he didn't have a lot of time. So like you'd be on a show, a regular comedy show, and in the middle, do that. And I would have to host, do my time, let him go up, and then explain to an audience what they just watched for four minutes and bring up the next guy. Nice. <laughs> I've never understood, like... You, you want to be a comic, but you also don't have the ability to be a comic. So you just stole something someone else did. <laughs> yeah, not even stealing nice. jokes. You're stealing the entire persona. Yeah. The worst uh, is when you get like an 80 year old comedian who wears like a top hat, a bow tie and a full on suit and like only does danger field jokes. That would be fucking terrible if you had a guy in your scene who was like a skinny old guy who wore really thick glasses and a hat and a bow tie. And like a plaid jacket and strictly did Dangerfield's worst jokes. Yeah, Tony Viagra, nuts. you fuck. <laughs> Does he go by Tony Viagra? Yeah. <laughs> like for real. The bonfire did a thing where they were bashing a Dangerfield joke. Like just bashing it where it was like, my wife, she, we've been married for five years, feels like five minutes. And then like playing up the pause there before no you respect. go. Five minutes underwater. And they did this a whole episode just making fun of this joke. The next week, we were in a competition together, and that's how Tony Viagra opened nice. word for word that fucking joke. That's yeah. awesome. nuts, man. Did either, did either you read Norm MacDonald's book? No, it costs $300 on Amazon. I can't get it. $300? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because he died. They jacked the price up. It might be oh, different okay. now, but when I checked it, it was like the day after he died. It was 300 oh, okay. bucks. It's an amazing one. Read- Oh, I already read the most prolific work on comedy. So, oh, um, Pat Oates' book. Fuck off. I'm trying to just why are you get shit on now? What are we doing? Oh, oh, saying, your book is good. I'm you trying said to it was a coaster, Mike. It's a yeah, fucking Mike's coaster. A I'm just trying to segue you into a plug. You know what I mean? I'm trying no, to. No, we, we, don't, we don't plug that anymore. Um, oh, okay. There's too many I, I mean, Help me. Look at. No, and I, if, if someone else wants to plug it, they can. I don't. Yeah, yeah it's definitely oh, your book. Trying to figure out. If you're like, hey, I've been doing this comedy thing for a minute and I don't really know what to do next. It's a great launching point to find some things that even if it's not like here's a step by step game plan, you're like, oh, if I start doing this, people will view me differently. Yeah, there's lots of good yeah. information in that book. Yeah, well, most anyway, I thought about Norman Donald's book. Pop off when you don't have any new jokes at the open mic. <laughs> yes. Right. When we have 40 comics, you're like, I wish wish this guy wouldn't tell the same five minutes. I've already heard three weeks in a row. <laughs> so anyway, Norm Donald's book. <laughs> Thank you for the plug. I appreciate both of you. Norm McDonald's book. Um, yeah, I was he, driving back from New York today, and I just saw <laughs> McDonald's. They have McDonald's at their rest stops. How crazy is that? That is crazy. That is nuts. But you go in. Did you know this? The prices there are way higher than they are regular McDonald's. What's the deal? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> I know right, there's so comics that do that bit. I'm sorry if you think I stole your hack joke. Um. He does a whole, he wrote the book, like it's a biography, but it's also not a biography. So half of it's fake and half of it's real. And he also writes it as the ghost writer and as him, which is hilarious. So they argue with each other, but he's writing it as both. So, but one whole paragraph is about his friendship with Rodney Dangerfield and how Rodney went through such a hard life. And he tells every Rodney joke, but like if it was real. And it's the greatest, it's like the funniest I've ever laughed because everything is about this man had no respect. Here's the things his wife made him go through. But he tells them all like they're real facts. And how his <laughs> wife cheated on him and his kids hated him. It's fucking insane. When you re- I was the only time I ever read a book and laughed out loud. That's awesome. It was good. I, and I feel cheap by having a plug for my book inside a man's No, I, I laughed out loud reading the, the Pat Oates book. Fuck you. I don't know. It's like a com- <laughs> no, I did. I, I went. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe he wrote this shit. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Whoa, this guy's a comic. Look at this guy. This guy stinks. Oh, boy. I said, I am going to find my voice someday. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> You're not. Man, he took it. He brought it upstairs. Yeah, everyone took my voice. <laughs> <laughs> they stole your voice. Like you, know how, uh, you know how, like, pedophiles look at National Geographics to look at kids? They do? Like, that was a big thing in the 90s. Yeah, because, like, in the 90s, Nat Geo was all about putting, like, naked tribes on the, the covers and things like that wait wait that's real like, 
yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, remember yeah. them being kids. I yeah, because when I was growing up, yeah, people looked at it for black women's jugs. Yeah, it was usually it was usually a, a black lady staring at the right. camera like, and what's that? And then that's like, what yeah, you titties, guys dude. would see, right? Because that's what we were all looking for. But other people would see the kids in there and just be really excited. <laughs> Starving like, kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, dude. like. I How hot is like, that kid? All malnutritionist. Uh, I, w- I would make an orphanage joke, but anyway. Um, but but they got away with it, like because it was like, oh look, it's culture. Like I'm so cultured, I'm learning about the world, and I feel like that's what alcoholics do with craft beer. They're just like, oh, I'm not an alcoholic. I just go try eight beers a day on the weekends. <laughs> like that's how I spend my free time. No, no, no. I'm cultured. I'm cultured. Like you couldn't do that with other crimes. It's like, for I my blog. Like, <laughs> like I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be like I'm starting a a blog on. Locally sourced heroin. Yeah, we're seeing how they yeah. cut it. We're in we're in Kensington, Philadelphia today. Let's see how Johnny cuts his heroin. It's like no one smokes like every cigarette. <laughs> yeah, why can you go to a brewery? I smoke six different cigarettes though. Ew. Yeah, why exactly. can you go to a brewery and review that, but you can't go to a meth lab and review that? Like what's right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's where they like... make it. <laughs> Do you think there is like an underground like Yelp review for drugs? Yeah, if there's black yeah, Twitter. There is that. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, and like, like you couldn't be like, oh, I'm just your honor. I'm not a rapist. I was just seeing how different <laughs> cultures react to forcibly having sex at gunpoint. Like you couldn't you can't do that with other things. Why do we give a pass to alcoholics? Yeah. What's his name from the who tried that with the pedophile videos? He had. He's like, no, I'm doing research. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, we just give a slippery slope. What's to look out for? <laughs> I want to make sure this doesn't happen to me. So I got to really fucking focus yeah, on it. it Dude, sure. my fuck. Oh, you just reminded me. My uh, my sister called me today. And she goes, hey, um, what version of uh, PSP did you have? And I was like, what'd you say? And she was like, your PSP, your PlayStation Portable. What version was that? And I was like, I don't know, the original. And she goes, oh, okay, cool. Because he's like, we gave it to your nephew. And I was like, <laughs> why? And she's like, oh, well, your mom said you were cool with it. And I was like, well, one, no one asked me. And I was like, two, I was like, I would, um, I would reset that thing. <laughs> and she's like, why? What's on it? And I was like, I don't know. I said, but I would reset it. And she's like, well, why would I reset it? And I was like, because I was 14 with the internet. And she goes, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I just snagged it from my nephew. <laughs> It's like, yeah, you can't give that to him. There's probably like beheading videos on that. Thank God she called. Uncle Mike's the coolest. I've never seen a girl have sex with a horse before. Like, oh, well, you know, sometimes you're on the internet. Mom, mom, I need a cup. Why do you need a cup? I need two girls in a cup. Yeah. You, my sister, in a cup. Get in here now. Do we have a glass jar I can shove in my ass? Hey, mom. He just, to play twi- he just wanted to play Twisted Metal. And yeah. <laughs> it's like, burn that thing, dude. Put it, throw it in the fire. Mom, if you get stuck in the, in the dryer, don't call the cops. Just call me. <laughs> PSP had like lime wire on it. Dude. It's AIDS. Get rid of that. I didn't know Uncle Mike was gay. <laughs> yeah, he, if he went through the history, dude, he learned some shit. I don't know how long it's been sitting up there, but there's for sure some stuff on it. <laughs> What's this word, Shamali? That that's shemail, and stop watching it. <laughs> Shamalis. It's just gonna be. Uh, to it's gonna be Shemali, your birthday. Shamali pirates. You ever watch those? <laughs> I'm the captain now, and the stewardess. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be your birthday, and she's gonna be like, "What kind of surprise party should we throw for Uncle Mike?" And he's gonna be like, "I don't know. He kept searching for lemon party." I, I, I would I, honestly. Party. I was waiting for a fucking text that was like, hey, don't come to Christmas. <laughs> I'm like, don't give my fucking shit away. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> you did this. I didn't do this. That was for me and my memories. Yeah, that's that's why our here. time. Our that's time why that, is down here. That's why that thing was buried under all those toys. <laughs> Speaking of reasons why we all won't get invited to Christmas, I had some time to kill this weekend and I was at the world's shittiest mall and there was a t-shirt printing station. And I went in and I tried. I tried to get him to print the Hebel Knievel shirt. They won't and the do guy it. Was wouldn't do like, it. I do not feel comfortable. <laughs> Pussy. 
<laughs> I tried. I asked four different people that say, I print shirts. I say, oh, DM me if you print shirts. And they're all like, yeah, I'll do whatever. And I sent them that. I sent them pictures of what I wanted on it, like with the Jewish head and the motorcycle and the menorah. They're like, no. I'm like, you don't, you barely have a business. What do you, I'm not going to put your name on it. Yeah, I won't tell people where I got it from. Yeah. I won't tell, but the I, just want the, I just want the gates of Auschwitz exploding with a motorcycle. Yeah. I just want it's a, a, it's a great shirt. shirt. It's a great you shirt. make shirts. It's like, <laughs> you made a shirt that said second place Little League. That just is as stupid as mine. <laughs> yeah. Here, Bobby, you guys got this for one second? Everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Mike, Hello. Uh, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. So Welcome back know, to the show. Thanks, man. It was it was a long miss. Uh, so, as you know, I uh, I've been pitching some shows to okay. oh, do you like got another Nickelodeon, one? Netf- you know, and uh, Disney Channel picked me up for a couple of original movies, and the first one, uh, it, honestly, you're a good actor, Mike. I can tell well, you've got you. a certain certain character type, so I'm gonna try to fit you in to one of these movies. Uh, somehow, and the one I, I I see you first first really getting ready for is uh it's it's are you familiar with Gene Hackman? Yeah. Okay, so Gene Hackman, <laughs> Gene Hackman yeah, gets hired this? hired by a school, and they're like, "Hey man, uh, we need you to coach the girls' hockey team." And he's like, "Fuck you guys! The girls' hockey team's never won here." And they're Women like, "Can't play sports." Exactly, and he's like, "They're like, well, we've never." thought you would back down from a challenge before you f- pussy you and uh, fuck. yeah and he's like all right challenge accepted so like the school is really good at guys hockey but not good at girls like it's where all the new nhl players go and so okay. he takes all the guys that get cut from the varsity and he's like hey uh jv sucks right and they're like yeah he's like if you just say you're a girl you could be on my varsity team and uh they they do it and like that's 99 percent of the team but really like the main character is a, a natural black woman who's just really good at hockey and so they get to the championship game and they're playing the other team and uh you're going to be the coach of the traditional turf feminist hockey team okay and, like, he gives this pivotal speech at the start of the third period that the other team starts to come back and i'm just gonna feed you the last couple lines and i'm just gonna be like back. do you want to lose to a Black lady at hockey, dude. Yeah, yeah, you're close, but don't, don't, don't. You oh, know, when sorry. I direct, this isn't, this isn't a fucking Apatow piece. Okay, I'm gonna give you All the right. lines. You read them. You want me to do De Niro? I, I actually would just prefer you to do Mike O'Donnell. Okay. So, so get ready. I'm gonna just uh, type out, type out the first couple of lines, and you just kind of go as they come into the chat. You ready? Uh, let me find the chat real quick. There we go. Chat's open. Listen up, ladies. This is where I'm looking around. Yep. It's bad enough. I'm like, damn, coach is pausing a lot between these senses. To lose to a bunch of... I'm getting angry. Hold on. To lose to a bunch of... Bobby hit enter? You know what? You know what? Let's, uh, let's start from the beginning. Okay. Let's see if we can really <laughs> flow this piece. All right. Listen up, ladies. It's bad enough. To lose to a bunch of cross-dressing faggots. <laughs> Is there anything after that? Yeah. I've been coaching hockey for I don't know. 20 said, fucking years now. Said, and I'll be said, damned if my dad disowns me on a fucking championship game. You said the F word and come town started playing on my phone, so I had to pause. Really? That's weird. <laughs> That's their safe word. <laughs> Siri, play come tell. All right. But but I won't lose. God damn it, Bobby. (laughs) All right. Listen up, ladies. It's bad enough to lose to a bunch of cross dressing faggots. But I won't lose to a goddamn. (laughs) 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 Nope. (laughs) <laughs> you and Rob Paul both stopped at the same time. Which is very Rob's good. all tapped out too. <laughs> By the way, you go least... lose to a goddamn. <laughs> but you know what, Mike? I, I can tell Bobby job. likes. I don't you need more a job than... that bad. Bobby likes you more than Rob Paul. <laughs> Rob, Rob Saul, or sorry, because you got. You should have snuck at... it in. You got the A at the end. He gave Rob Saul the hard ER when he had to read it. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be a good way to do the next one. Yeah. All right. So clearly, I could lose to some robot with knee gears. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's one movie. Obviously, you're not going to have the balls to, to really encompass that role. But another <laughs> one I have is it's a Hallmark movie, right? And it's about it's about a country music star for Christmas. And this guy, he's like a, a like a Keith Urban type, not really accepted by real country fans. You know, like, don't play that Keith Urban shit. You know what I mean, Mike? You, you look yeah. like the type of guy who enjoys real country music. And he goes back to his hometown that's kind of like an old steel town in central Pennsylvania. Um, and he's there. And his whole thing is he, he keeps running in. You know how, like, in Hallmark movies, there's the local bad guy? Well, yeah. that's the, the local mayor. And he's like, he's kind of like you. Like, you would be who I would be envisioning for this role, right? And uh, pretty much pretty much what you do is you take him one night and you're like, yeah, I'll show you where we can set up the hall where you can you can raise money for the kids with cancer, singing your 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 fun country tunes. And you, you take him behind. And really what this is, is it's actually a prank show. And what he doesn't know is that you're you're pranking him and you're pretending okay. you're a method actor. And then you just brutally sodomize him. And then the, basically just just what would be the sweet nothings you would whisper <laughs> in his ear and like the scene's gonna be like you're gonna say a couple of things it's gonna be like the shock and horror and pain on his face and then it's just gonna fade out to silent night and like obviously you're gonna still be muttering things so you wanna, you wanna maybe give us a couple couple of those things you'd be muttering to him a couple of things i'd be muttering to <laughs> yeah, him. yeah yeah you really want to show him that you're the real man and he's like this fairy who sings weird music what was I supposed to do again? Sorry, Pat sent me a fucking picture. <laughs> I sent it to you too, Bobby. It's a picture of your profile. I'll be, I'll be honest, I... Bobby, <laughs> I missed a lot of what you said. <laughs> I captured that beautifully. I, I know you said something about taking this dude behind an alleyway and saying some stuff. <laughs> but there's a picture of you smiling with the N-word and I fucking... <laughs> Well, we're gonna have to delete that, aren't we? No, <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm not putting that picture. That picture's not gonna go out anywhere. That's it's going on my Instagram. That won't right now. be seen. That won't be seen on the show. No, that's your profile picture on my phone now. <laughs> <laughs> tell, you, tell you that. Me too. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I'm deleting that right now. I just thought it was great that when you wrote that one word, I can feel the pause thing. I, I gotta take a picture. <laughs> and I closed it up. Like, <laughs> sorry. So what? What am I doing again? I'm sorry. You look so happy. Movie? It's a Hallmark movie. Yeah, this kid, this guy's like, I'm like, oh yeah, you, you want to help kids out? Yeah, but then, but then instead of showing him the actual barn, you just take it behind him and brutally sodomize him, and like, yeah. you're gonna be grunting manly things in his ear as like Silent Night plays, and it shows all the Christmas lights, but they're all blue and kind of sad now. Okay. So what would you say? I'd say, um, listen, boy. Uh. <laughs> Unlike Santa, I don't only come once a year. <laughs> Perfect. Some shit like that, maybe. And if you... You've got a purdy mouth. If you think that seems like a fun movie where Mike sodomizes an unwilling uh, participant behind a barn, you might enjoy Silk City Hot Sauce. Pat, it looks like you got it all ready to go. Tell the people about the products. Oh, I got a new shipment in this week. Four new tasty bottles. One I got, I didn't even, I got, I ordered three. And of course, Jeff took care of me and sent me a fourth one. I didn't even know this was a thing. They're dragon. They have that in a taco. Dragging my balls on your Boom. Face. Dragging my cock all over your taco. That's what it is. Salsa picante taco fiesta right here. This shit. It looks like it's a little bit scary, but I was happy to get a free one there. I also got this because Jeff, when he was on, told me about this. And we've talked afterwards. This is his holy water. This keeps Jeff, the guy who runs the place, the guy who has to keep all the energy in his body to stop Mike O'Donnell from drunk texting him saying, make California rape boy, or whatever he makes. Carolina Reapus, bring that picture up then. I made a good cover for the house. That, that was a fantastic cover. But <laughs> California rape me, that's a good sauce. But anyway, so he told me about this one. It's his holy water. It keeps him powerful. It's his Vermont maple cayenne tonic and elixir. You just fucking... It's like old timey medicine people shit. You take a teaspoon. I've been taking a swig out of it each day. It clears your goddamn sinuses. It wakes you the fuck up, and you feel goddamn fantastic. But nice, dude. our two You're just doing a shot of hot sauce in the morning. It's not, it's it's not hot sauce. It's apple cider vinegar, fresh ginger, and then maple cayenne. That's it. 
Uh, so it was four fucking days. It's a little bit of burn, but it the you the fuck up. Do you hate waking up in the mornings? Do you want to make it even worse? Start off yeah. with a shot of apple cider vinegar, hot cayenne how, pepper. How <laughs> gross is coffee? Ew. I love coffee. About, I drink coffee in this. Vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-mm, good. Okay. How about this, though? You hate waking up because you ate too much pizza at 3 a.m. and you feel clogged. I just hate waking up. Yeah, and you feel clogged. <laughs> Take a yeah, shot of oh, this yeah. and you will blow it out your asshole. And speaking of blowing out your asshole, the new one of the newest sauces they have where it literally says that on there. Because that's the one from Ski Mask and all those guys. If you recognize for the first time ever on our show, if you get close, how much closer can I get? Uh, I'm getting pretty close. See that butt? Yeah. That butt. You see the girl's body? That's the same body that's behind Bobby right now. Smokey's now on the show twice. She's on a bottle and she's Bobby's background. Her body is becoming super famous. She's on hot sauce. To be fair, they're great guys. I tried to sauce Bobby. This is more your speed. It, it's a too fat, it's too hot of a sting for me the second I tried it. It had good flavor you're to saying, it. You're saying it's kind of like what we do, just borrowed elements of it. <laughs> okay. Is that... You're like, like maybe an idea we had first and they were like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely just tack that on. <laughs> show, them, show them my hot sauce. But you know what one is really good? Chrissy Mayer's Nightmare. Nightmare. It's sweet. It's got a little more heat than I'm used to, but I really liked it. I would say that, you know what Tales from the Pool, Silver City Pullover t- uh, tastes like? Um, a way too hot, badass Jew. That's what it tastes like. I mean, a bad way. If you, if you like more heat, then you're going to love it. I'm just a pussy. So what you're saying is it's like that sauce attempts to be badass Jew, but in attempting to be even spicier, it loses a lot of the flavor. I would say it's like <laughs> in hotter water. You're saying it's too edgy to be. <laughs> it tries hard. Yes, yes. I would agree with that. Hey, Mike, have you been asked to be on that show yet? In hot water? No. Uh, ski mask. No. Oh, that's weird. No, I don't get invited to stuff. Yeah, usually, yeah. usually about thirty seconds after we're done posting the episode, you get the invite. Hey, you want to come do another fun show? Yeah, it's show my hot sauce, better. Pat. I had a good hot sauce. Yeah, I don't what have the that fancy. Picture. You have the well. It's on your picture. Facebook. Yeah, you can see. I know it's. There. I gotta go do research. That you have. I'll send it picture. to you. I'll send it to you. You why don't you just share it? I'll send it to you. You can share so, it. That's right. Silk City Hot Sauce has two new flavors. One's blow it out your asshole, sucking dick, Silk City Ski Mask <laughs> Collective combination. The other one is Chrissy Mayer's, what was it? Nightmare? Nightmare? Nightmare, yeah. Now, okay, we're not supposed to tell you this. We're part of the brand, so we have some inside information. I have it on good authority that actually the Nightmare sauce is what they bribed the That's judges not my with. hot sauce. Here's the picture that Mike, you sent me <laughs> about the hot sauce. <laughs> That's Carolina Rapist. It's called Pig Me Up Before You Go Go. It's a fucking great morning hot sauce. It's made with dirt. Pig me a flower and call me your bitch. That's what it's called. It's wonderful. Go ahead, Bobby. We do not have water. <laughs> Would you bring us so shitty elixir? <laughs> we got hot sauce for you guys. <laughs> Wake up through this, bitch. So I gotta go do. I gotta be um Mike's secretary for a minute. Hold I sent it to you. I know. The, it's not like I have that ready to rock. The other tribes they drink the coffee before we do, so we drink Silk City Elixir to have the energy to get through the day. <laughs> You're a real pep in my step in the morning, you know. <laughs> We've never <laughs> actually tasted coffee. We just pick the beans till we die. <laughs> before be nice. I before I fight Tiger to, for, to save my young one. <laughs> I always take a sip of Silk City Elixir. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> I like that, that that ideology then trickles down to the United States and you've got black Israelites like out on the corner in New York City like, and the white man gave us the coffee. We drink <laughs> Silk City Elixir. Fight the white man. <laughs> it's like, no, it's made by They don't white want man. you to have a pep in your step. BLM. Black Elixirs matter. Now, what's vinegar sound like? Oh, it does. <laughs> mm, 
That's a white man's word. You want some vinegar, please? Where is that photo? Bobby, do you have any fun stories to share? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, let me look at my notes and see what right, I do to too, but I just, I'm right now I'm being Mike's secretary. Let me just, yeah, Pat, I also need you to send a fax for me. I got you. Oh, now's a, now's another time since we're talking about sponsors to bring up another one of our, our sponsors this year. It's the holiday season. We talked about t-shirts earlier. We won't have them in time, uh, to get them to you obviously. So that's not a good Christmas gift, but this sponsor, this right, one? We'll go to Mike's thing first. No, no, we'll go to Mike's first. <laughs> Hey, that's a good hot sauce, dude. Look, it's got a, a scary clown. He's What's holding he... a reaper. He's holding a reaper pepper. I was like, what is he holding? <laughs> it's a Carolina reaper pepper instead of a knife. <laughs> and it's scary hot. If this was on a shelf, I would run from that store. <laughs> he would be like, yo, the hot sauce is probably pretty fucking hot. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> this is John Wayne spicy. <laughs> John Wayne Tasty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, send it that to him. I, he won't go John Wayne Tasty? He right. would call it John Wayne Tasty. Jeff would do that in a fucking That's just a clown, clown with the balloons holding a bottle of hot John sauce. Wayne Tasty would be the greatest name for a fucking sauce. Call time. him up, dude. And there's tears coming down, but it's hot sauce tears? Oh, yeah. I don't have Silk City's fucking contact. And it just says, boy, oh, boy, it's good. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I think he killed like 32 people. 33, oh boy, boy. Oh boy. Oh Actually, boy. the kids and I are literally watching a John Wayne Gacy thing right now. <laughs> it's like, I got all the info. He started nice. the episode two of it by going, I just love clowning. It's what I said. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tweet him right now. I was like, how about a sauce called John Wayne Tasty? <laughs> John Wayne Tasty. It didn't say, boy, oh boy, it's good. I don't know. I got excited by something on the Facebook when they when they put up those sauces and I shared about it and they said, what about a duck sauce next? And I was like, ooh, ooh. it could be rumors. I don't know, but we've talked about Frank's duck sauce. Who knows? Maybe it never happens. But the fact that it's being talked about by the guy who makes sauces. I would yeah. love that. Frank's Fra- Frank's homemade duck sauce would be fucking great. But oh, also great. John Wayne Tasty's boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, 33 times. <laughs> Yeah, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. And that's a hot sauce you can keep in the basement for years. years. It'll never go bad. And if you're worried about going bad, just cover about 800 pounds of lime over it. <laughs> you, you, be think, fine. you think after your house smells like death for like, I don't know, a week, you'd be like, something's up. Well, he said that it was because of uh, the sewage. and then the I know, event. but he said it was the sewage for like years. And they asked him how many, how many, how much lime did he use? He goes, I don't know, seven to 800 pounds. <laughs> Those boys had, didn't know what was coming, except for him. He was coming. Hey, <laughs> Bobby, you had something you wanted to say? Yeah, um, yeah uh, we'll go to that in a second. Pat, start another story. I will. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. It'll flow better this way. All right, good. So and Mike, story you're here, not the co-host, so stop trying to direct the show, huh? Maybe take a hint. Well, wait, I don't think we ever said at this show at one point that he wasn't the co-host. I think there's three now. Nope, nope, nope. I don't want to be on this fucking show, dude. <laughs> good, what was that? Why did you get pissy? Don't get pissy. I like you both on this show. I think I should leave, and you should both be on this show. I'm better with that. I worked out the best part of this show is when I went to get the sauce. Mom of 11 gets social media backlash for not using contraception. A soon to be mom of 12 is told, was told she doesn't use contraception and has been told pregnant every, has been pregnant every year since 2008. Courtney Rogers, 37 was a virgin when she married her pastor, husband, Chris 33 in October, 2008. Now Courtney and Chris from Santa Fe, New Mexico, are parents to Clint, Clay, Cade, Kaylee, Cash, Colt, Case, Kalina, Katie, Corrali, and Karis. A lot of K's. It's all C's. I know. K, 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 K. Their ages are 11, 10, 9, 9, 7, 6, 6, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Baby number 12 is due in March, and the family saves money by using cloth nappies and skipping prepackaged snacks in favor of fresh fruit they've grown. Courtney, who has 29,000 Instagram followers, is almost many kids she has, 
is that she experiences trolling but doesn't care. People judge us at all times, she said. They don't like large families or accuse us of not providing for them. It doesn't really bother me because I know they're strangers and don't know us at all. Amazingly, she homeschools all her children. I'm a stay-at-home homeschooling mom, she said. We also have a small farm we're working on expanding. So she basically just built slaves. She told she was told how she always dreamt of being a mother. You know what? And not, I'm not going to my picture, but she's actually pretty cute for a lady who's had 57 things come out of her. I always wanted kids, but no specific number, Courtney said. My husband suggested 10, like his mom. After 10 arrived, they still felt young, so we went for cheaper by the dozen. I feel like that's the perfect family with six boys and six girls. But sadly, she also suffered three miscarriages. Oh, call back to earlier. And I've been pregnant every year since 2008, she said. At times, it's hard work. Keeping up with everyone's schooling and all the cleaning and laundry is a chore. My husband works at our church, plus has several side jobs to earn money. Asked if she used contraception, she said, we haven't really prevented pregnancy so far. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. My head's bigger than the whole body. That's way better. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you also put his head where the pepper was. The family day starts early. We usually have breakfast at 8 a.m. and go straight into their schooling, she said. I stay busy with that until 11 or 11.30. We do a cleanup. I don't care about all that shit. They usually get to watch. After Courtney, she's happy with her life. I love it, she said. I'm strict and whatever, but I'm, I'm lenient during playtime. She breaks down all her shit. But the big thing is she's bothered by everyone trolling her and telling her how to live her life on Facebook and Twitter and all that. Who is the piece of shit in this story? Is it people for yelling at her and telling her she can't have 12 fucking kids? They want to have 12 kids. That's their fucking business. Is it her for putting it out there? You know what? You can have 12 kids and not fucking tell people. I mean, people around you know, but you don't got to go have 28,000 Instagram followers and show people all your kids all the time. Is it the father for not one time? I mean, do you want any silence in the house? Pull out once. That's 12 kids and three miss shoots. So that's 15 times you were trying to blow this lady up and she's in her early 30s. Like, chill. Like, you can pull out a little bit. Get a sock or something. Who's the piece of shit in this story? Mike, you go first. Um... I don't know, definitely the fucking husband for sure. It's like you yeah, pull out one time, you maniac. <laughs> it's insane. It's obviously him. I mean, that sounds like a control thing. You're making I mean, it's, woman yeah, never has a life. It's one of those things, like because big families. I mean, that's what that's that's on you. That's a personal thing. Because that's it used to be like that. You have those people who are like, oh yeah, my fucking grandma had fucking. I have eighteen uncles and fucking aunts and shit like that. You're like, holy shit. But. Well, you did that. How does she? Have, how does she have time for land. Instagram? What? How does she have time for Instagram with all those kids? I don't think she's a good mom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she said she's homeschooling them, which means that she thinks she's this brilliant person that's going to teach them all. But they're all a lot of them are bait. You're not homeschooling. There's four of them under the age of five. You're not homeschooling. You just can't leave enough to get them on the bus. I don't know. It's either it's either between him for never pulling out or on her for never once being like, I'm just going to take birth control. This is insane. She can't know all their names all the time. No. Like, that's insane. Like, that's too many kids. You're never going to feel love as a kid. You can't love 11 kids. Yeah. If one of them goes missing. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's, there's 10 yeah. more. dude. It's fine. That's why we made 11. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have eleven they're fingers. That, they're trying to do that. Jack, the the Jackson family. They're like one of these kids is going to be famous. Yep, we make them Just all pick. A, a, we all yeah. make them. We make them all pick a branch off the tree. We hit them with it, and we hope one of them sings yeah. good. Uh-huh. That, that's insane. Like she's going to have her twelfth kid. I thought you were going to pick up pull the picture of her, but I like the picture you pulled better of. Just, <laughs> of me. <laughs> no, of you is way better of her. But she's not bad, but she's still pregnant. Her body, my God, I feel bad. Like when she's done, you said she she doesn't look bad, right? No, but she's still gonna have insane stretch marks. Is it like the Octomom situation? Because she had like eight kids come out at once, and she didn't no, look. I mean, when she, I read she the ages, there's only, two, with the, like there's only two twins. She had that porno with like the spaghettios on her. She didn't okay, look that the, bad. The ages are 11, 10. Yeah, they're all Irish nine, twins, dude. Nine, seven, six, six. Four, three, two, and almost one. Happy New Year, baby. <laughs> <laughs> two twins. That's insane. Bobby, who's a piece of shit? 
it's it's ideology like that. It's I'm guessing they're from the south. That's what Southern Baptists do. You take a bunch of borderline retarded people and they're like, hey, you know the thing that makes you feel really, really good? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, if you do that a bunch, you're doing what God wants you to do. And then you end up with these families of like 12 kids, 15 kids. We had neighbors who had like, I think it was 10 by the time we left uh, Memphis. And like, to answer your question of how does she raise the kids? She doesn't. The neighborhood does. Like my parents raised those kids more than their parents ever did. It's the same shit. Too many. They were all homeschooled. So you can't ever get it. And then there's always one cool kid in the bunch. We had Thomas. He was the oldest and he figured it out early on that this was like a fucking call. And he would just like parents would be like, we're going to Bible study and be like, fuck you. God's dead. And we killed him. And you'd be like, we're in sixth grade. How do you know Nietzsche? This is fucking nuts. (laughs) But like, I I imagine that kid either went on to great things or is a, as a loser who vapes and like hits on young women. And I'm only basing that second guess off of his Facebook account. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're bothering <bonded, laughs> me both i think you can yeah. hold on you're I'm pulling up this here Pat, you have kids would you how many kids do you have two would you want 10 more no they're adults <laughs> <laughs> like yeah and there they are look she's cute Ooh, somewhere hitler's nothing <laughs> yeah that is a very uh... oh wait i don't think that's them <laughs> oh, I just I just typed in family. I typed in mother of eleven kids, but like one, two, three, four, well, let's, five, six, seven, eight. It's an older photo. Let's let's pretend it is. It's eight. All right, yeah, well, it should be a better times. Jesus, yeah, that's that's too many. Like, where do you even? Where do you find a bench that big to take family photos? First of all, that I mean, that many kids in the house. I don't care how big your house is. All the older kids know. I mean, how they're fucking all the time. Like you're just fucking in front of your kids. They're yeah. not all sleeping at the same time. That's they're cool. If you have fucking. that many kids, only one of your kids is getting braces. Yeah. I don't know if you know how expensive well, braces are. On their mouth. <laughs> a lot. I mean, when you have that many kids, <laughs> a, a lot of them, are getting yeah. leg braces. Yeah. A couple of them are coming out <laughs> fucking yeah, they, gum. They're not all treats. No, there's a couple fucking misor- misformed fuckers there. Definitely, that would be a good. That'd be a good sports movie, though, right? I'm thinking we need a coach with all, entire baseball teams related. Probably, probably Gene Hackman would be a good coach for this. And movie. the father's like, you might be t- eleven of the worst white kids ever, but at least you're not. Take it, Mike. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This one's a little different. Basically. Gene Hackman is is a football coach, and he's 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 not won a game in a while, and they're starting to be like, he's just old. It's time for All right, him to yeah, on. you type out the dialogue and all. No, 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 just pitching a bit here. That's cool. Just run all over it. And uh, he's like, "What can what can I do to win?" And then he watches uh, the Blind Side, so he just goes around to all the high schools and starts recruit recruiting the black kids to be adopted. And they're like, we we have a family. I've got like a, a mother and father. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, come come be adopted. And then he adopts the whole family. They all get arrested one night and sing in a jail cell or something. I don't know, Mike. I was hoping you'd pick up and carry the torch at some point. Well, I didn't want to run over your fucking bit, dude. So, you know. <laughs> There's some tension here, huh? It's kind of like we're competing for dad's how, love. I, I, how, I get it. I get it. How would you like to be both? And the how would you like to be kids? adopted? I have a family. How would you like to be white? <laughs> yeah, sounds there pretty good. Go. <laughs> Catches the ball running. <laughs> All right. Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, thank you for having me again, man. We I'm glad this, you. Well, the, the this episode's going to go out, right? Yeah, this so one's going out. Right. That's okay. <laughs> this one people can see. We, we'll, cool. we'll see how well the one later on today goes. <laughs> You might get stuck in Patreon hell again. Who knows? All right. I mean, I said faggot a bunch, but that's right. And Bobby typed it. You didn't say the other thing, though. So that's I good. did not. So. And by the way, I've already you. erased that picture. So Mike's the only one that can have I blackmail. Now. Bobby's contact photo. I'm yeah. never getting rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Bobby, Bobby, I was going to send it to shirt. Gino, but I knew he'd put it on TV. So I was like, <laughs> okay, exactly. I'm, I'm putting sure. that on a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Bobby, come back. Go. Listen, you either make Hebel Knievel or you make this one. <laughs> and that's your two choices. It's your Don't face make... is priceless. 
<laughs> Mike, tell people where they can uh, follow you, all that shit. At, at Mike OD Comedy on Instagram. I'm the good Mike O'Donnell, not that fucking hack from Philly. Uh, at a boy in his fridge on Instagram. A podcast is everywhere. Go listen to that. It's great. And um, if you're ever in Harrisburg, I'm doing comedy there all the time. Bye. Uh, check out the East Side Dave show with Roy Harder every Tuesday at 730 on Compound Media or follow me at Bobby underscore Tamburo on Twitter. You can find me trolling Larry Bea. That's my new thing. He, uh, he posted a tweet. It was like a DM. It was like, hey, man, you were so fun at the show last night. I got to come see you tomorrow at this other place with my girl. And so I've made a fake one where it was like this chick was like, oh, my God, you killed. And your dick was definitely 14 inches long. Uh, you know, nice. just fuck Larry Bea. Pat, Ooh, what do you got? shots fired. Let's get loud. <laughs> Go to Silk City Hot Sauce and buy some stuff. Jeff's amazing. Go support them. They're awesome. I just got some new shit. They send it. They take care of you. The artwork's amazing on the front. And you're going to be buying people stuff for Christmas. It's a, it's an inexpensive but fun and unique gift. So go there and do that. Use the promo code POS. Save 15%. More importantly, it's just something fun. You don't know to get anybody. Give them that. Even if they don't fucking eat it, they don't want the hot sauce, they can put the bottle up like a display because it looks cool. So just do that. Support them. Support the show. It's a good time. And, Jeff, if you're watching this, do Mike's Make-A-Wish and make Carolina Repis, please. No, please make John me. Wayne tasty. John Wayne tasty. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I can't do 33 boys. Making sure it's good. Go to our Patreon, POS Podcast Patreon. Get on there. If you want to see not only the episode we've been talking about that you haven't seen, where Bobby was like, no. And then you want to see the clip where Bobby said, don't even put this on Patreon. (laughs) Guess what's on Patreon? That's on there for 17 minutes. And that's fine. You check it out. Because my brother got mad and said, don't tease us like that. It's behind a paywall. I'll defend Bobby. Put it up. So okay, so I did, and I watched it. And Bobby, and once, and then you'll understand the first part of the show where Mike and I say why we're the pieces of shit, and not Bobby, because we are the greatest Abbott Costello routine of orphanages and molesting ever. So check that out. And if you can't do that, you can't afford it. No big deal. It's only three dollars a month. But if you can't, I understand that. Go on over to the YouTube, the POS podcast YouTube. Subscribe there. We're well over eight hundred subscribers now. It keeps climbing every fucking day. Get over there. Check that out. We appreciate you. And Bobby. Remember, don't be a piece of shit.